All right, guys. My name is Captain Mike, host of Florida Sport Fishing TV, and welcome back to another live Thursday night seminar. Just gonna give it a couple of minutes here, let everybody get fired up, get spooled up here, logged on. Um, again, wanted to take a second. Thank you guys very much for joining us. Um, you know, every week, every Thursday night, we go live. We start our seminars with a up to date you know, real-time Florida Keys fishing report, a little overview as to what's going on down here in the Keys. And then we get right into our topic of conversation, which tonight, as you know, is pinfish. Um, may sound like a boring topic, but I'm going to tell you, I'm super stoked about it, super excited. There's a lot to know uh, about pinfish, and it really is one of the most versatile bait fish that's out there. And we're certainly going to get into that, okay? We really will. I just want to take a moment, you know, it's late June here, but, you know, I just got to take a moment and talk a little bit about the tragedy today in Miami. I don't want to bring it to light, but obviously with that building collapse, my heart goes out to all of those families. And man, I'll tell you what, I hope everybody's okay. I don't know what the outcome of that is or how something like that could even happen. What an absolute tragedy. Um, but again, you know, we should all pray for everybody there and wish all of those families well. And, and I just don't know what else to say about it. Absolutely terrible, okay? But hopefully as the days progress, more and more survivors will be found and uh, there'll be some good news on the horizon. But all right, let's go ahead and get into this real quick here. I don't have a lot of time tonight, but I wanna talk about a lot of different things. Like I said, we start our Thursday night live with a real-time Florida Keys fishing report. And I should just mention, if you want to catch up on previous weeks, you certainly can do it right here at Instagram in our feed. And of course, you can check out our YouTube channel at Florida Sport Fishing. So fishing front, let's talk about that. Offshore, the dolphin fishing remains strong off the Keys. There have been a good showing of larger fish, some gaffers, bigger schoolies, some slammers mixed into the pot there. Uh, so dolphin fishing, I'll tell you, remains a surefire bet. You know, if you want to catch fish down here in the Keys, go dolphin fishing right now because they're just out there. You know, they really are 600 to 900 feet remains the magic depth. But on any given day, that can change. Uh, but just look for the birds, look for the debris. There's a lot of weed out there. I've been spending a lot of time offshore. There's a lot of grass, a lot of weed lines. And that's just not enough to find the fish because there's so much of that. So you've got to combine different forms of structure. Combine the weed line with birds working, the presence of flying fish, you know, and now you have the ingredients for success. Don't look for one of those things. Look for multiple ingredients and that's going to lead the way to some solid dolphin fishing. Deep drop fishing is also strong. A lot of snowy groupers being caught. Uh, there have been some questions about this and I just want to remind you Snowy groupers, it's one per boat, okay? So don't go out there thinking, oh, I'm gonna catch a dozen of them. You're not, you're allowed one per boat. Very, very strict on the snowy grouper limits, okay? And rightfully so. Big gray tile fish out there as well. Uh, I've seen barrel fish being brought in, queen snappers. A lot of current recently with this strawberry moon, which evidently is really unique. Um, the tides here in the Keys have been crazy, super low tides, lower than I've seen since I've lived down here. High tides, and that's, uh, you know, that current and the tides certainly affects the fishing down here. It's affecting the mutton snapper fishing on the wrecks and the reef fishing, and it also affects that offshore deep dropping with so much current because it makes it very challenging to hold the bottom. But, you know, enough lead, hold the boat into the current. There's different tactics that you can use there to catch fish offshore in the deep. Uh, working your way closer to shore, you know, in that 150 to 250, the wreck fishing right now, it was super strong. The last couple of weeks, if you've been following my IG page and my stories, you've seen all these monster muttons that we've been on, big giant African pompanos. We've had cobias in the mix, all kinds of really good stuff, but that bite has completely fizzled out. Last couple days for me have been real, real tough. Hopefully it picks back up, and I'm sure it will once this moon dissipates. I've also seen a lot of green, dirty water. I'm assuming from all of the fresh water from the rain, you know, and coming down and, and the, the runoff and pouring out of the Gulf. So that's affected the wreck fishing as well. 
One thing that is out there are amber jacks. Plenty of big amber jacks. There's big jack crevals mixed in. If you're looking for a strong fish, if you're looking for action on jigs, I'll tell you what, get out there, fish the wrecks all up and down the Keys, to the east, to the west, wherever. In that 150, 250, 300 foot range, you're gonna find plenty of action. You just might not find the target species that you're looking for. We've also had some nice blackfin tunas in the mix. Not a lot, but the blackfin tunas that we jig on the wrecks are all big fish in the 20 to 30 pound range, some big studs. So that's always a nice bonus as well. There are a lot of tarpon still around. That tarpon fishing is strong, no question. Uh, around the bridges, a lot of tarpon. On the patch reefs, big mangrove snappers, strong fishing there. And I'm seeing a lot more mangroves than the yellowtails. So expect to really stay busy with those mangroves right now, okay? And one of the prime baits for those mangrove snappers are live pinfish, those smaller pinfish, couple inches, two, three inches, is an absolute primo bait for the mangrove snappers. And it keeps everything else away, the lane snappers, the yellowtails. You know, when you're out there really focusing on those big mangroves, you wanna fish those bigger baits which absolutely perfectly leads us right into our topic tonight, which like I said, is pinfish. So let's talk about the benefits of pinfish. There's a lot to say here, okay? And we're gonna try and jam it all into a short period of time. First of all, everything eats pinfish, no question. Snook, redfish, black drum, trout, tarpon, all of your popular inshore species, regardless of where you are around the state of Florida, eat pinfish. Equally as important, offshore mangrove snappers, mutton snappers love pinfish. I can tell you it is absolutely my bait of choice when fishing for those larger snappers for a variety of reasons that we'll talk about. However, don't discount pinfish as a great bait for pelagic species as well. You know, when we're drifting wrecks, we'll feed a couple of pinfish on flat lines out. And you'd be surprised, forget it, the cobia, as we all know, will suck those up in a second. Cobia love pinfish. But how about sailfish? We've caught sailfish on pinfish, dolphin on pinfish. It's a great bait for king mackerel, you know, yellow jacks, all sorts of predatory species will gobble up a pinfish. So it absolutely is a universal bait that you can fish from the surface to the seafloor for a wide variety of inshore and offshore species. What other bait fish is so versatile? You know, there are a few that are so versatile. So it's a great, great bait fish. And absolutely, if you're not fishing pinfish already, you certainly should. And I just want to add that alive, it's excellent, but it's also a great dead bait. Okay, I know up you know, in the Big Bend, very common, take a live pinfish, slice it in half diagonally, fish it under a popping cork, and right there, you've got a great sea trout bait and a, a redfish bait, okay? Very, very popular. A lot of scent comes out of that bait. Easier for those trout to eat that bait because it's not a whole live pinfish. So again, it's a great bait around the entire state, wide array of species. And they're available year round. So let's also remember that, that it's not only great for so many different fish, but it's easy to catch around the entire calendar, around the entire year. Okay, so that's another benefit to the pinfish. And of course, you know, you could buy them if you wanted to anywhere from eight to $24 a dozen. Okay, believe it or not, big price range, but that's really what the range is, eight to 24 bucks a dozen. A lot of tackle shops sell them alive, easy to keep alive. So if you can't catch them, you can buy them, you know, obviously, but they're so readily available that I certainly recommend catching them. And there's a variety of different ways to do that. Okay. Uh, also, pinfish are very easy to keep alive on the boat and off the boat. On the boat, obviously, any sort of recirculating live well or pumping water into that live well is all you need to keep pinfish alive all day long. I'm, I'm, I've had two, 300 pinfish in a 70-gallon live well aboard the 39CV, and they've all stayed alive all day. Not a problem at all. Your biggest concern is water temperature. You don't want to leave them in any sort of bucket cool or anything like that where that water temperature is going to climb and that's going to be the end of your pinfish and they're all going to float to the surface. So they can withstand low oxygen, low salinity levels. As a matter of fact, pinfish will even make their way into freshwater environments. But as that water temperature rises, that's your biggest concern. So 
If you're in a situation where you don't have an aerator, you don't have you know the ability to recirculate that water and put in cooler water, at the very least, put big ice blocks in the water uh, to keep that temperature down, okay? Because again, that's gonna be your biggest concern to keeping them alive is that water temperature. Off the boat, any sort of in water bait pen, may it be mesh, may it be the big tub type with the holes in them, you know, I use both of them, um, will keep pinfish alive. The only thing you gotta do is feed them. They're voracious, okay, and they need to eat. Some of them in captivity won't eat, but some will, so just keep feeding them. You can feed them chum, you can feed them fish carcasses, cat food, I mean, pretty much anything, okay, and they will eat it. So just keep feeding them. Otherwise, you know, they tend to eat each other also. They eat each other's tails, and, you know, it, it can end up being a mess. So make sure that you feed them. But like I said, on and off the water, it's an easy bait fish to keep alive. Where do we find pinfish? Well, understand that pinfish roam the entire coastline around the entire state of Florida. That's pretty broad, right? I mean, everywhere. They're everywhere. Everywhere on, you know, on grass beds. That's the key. you got to find the grass in the inshore estuaries, the bays, rivers, canals, you know, whatever it may be, you have to find the grass. That's the key to finding the pinfish. The grass provides the pinfish with shelter and food because there's so many little crustaceans and finfish and baitfish and so much stuff in that grass that the pinfish eat. By the way, I don't know if you know this, but they also eat the grass. Okay, pinfish will eat that seagrass. So, of course, finding healthy seagrass beds generally will lead the way to pinfish. Just keep that in mind. Three to eight feet is the magic depth. Now, I find, especially here in the Keys, wintertime, it's, they tend to be very easy to catch just about everywhere, in the bay side, on the ocean side here. Um, they're, they're really easy to catch just about everywhere. However, in the summertime, they become more challenging to catch. Why is that? Well, because in the summertime here, we see a lot of juvenile snappers in our pinfish traps. And once those juvenile mangroves and the juvenile lane snappers move into those pinfish traps, the pinfish do not move into those traps. So keep that in mind, it becomes more challenging to catch them in the traps, especially on the ocean side here especially on the ocean side, in the summertime. Even on the bay side, you often have to go really, really deep, you know, maybe five to 10 miles up in the bay, you know, to really get the pinfish real thick, okay? Um, but generally, if you put in the time, you put in the effort, you shouldn't have that hard of a time loading up on pinfish, that's for sure. It's probably the easiest bait to find and catch, I, I would say so, especially because you can catch it so many different ways. If you get on a grass bed, you can wade out to the grass bed, you can cast from shore, you know, off a dock, off a boat, okay? And you can chum them up, throw, again, any sort of chum, cat food, anything is really gonna attract those pinfish, and you can, for starters, throw a cast net on them, okay? That's one way to catch them, right? You just feed them, you get them all chummed up, throw the net on them, boom, game over, you're good to go. Often you catch two, three, four dozen at a time. Another way to catch them is sabiki rigs, right? The multiple hook bait rigs work really, really well for pinfish. And if you wanna bait them with a tiny piece of squid, it's just gonna make the job all that much easier. Okay, throw it out there, half ounce, one ounce sinker, just twitch it a little bit on the grass bed, especially if you chum up the area, it's not going to take you long to load up on the pins, okay? If you don't have a sabiki rig, a single hook rig, 12 inches above a small sinker, again, will do the trick, a small gold hook. Squid, shrimp, excellent little baits on that hook, or gulp, little piece of gulp, okay? Stays on the hook real, real well, and the pinfish love it, okay? And you can just throw it out there on the grass beds one at a time and catch them hook and line that way. Of course, another way is with traps, right? We use traps, of course, throughout the keys here. There's all of the guides and recreational anglers set pinfish traps, which essentially, you know, I'm gonna just show you one of many different styles of traps, but essentially they all do the same thing. 
There's an opening where you can load the trap with either a frozen block of chum or a chum bag loaded with chum, some fish carcasses, pretty much anything. Pinfish aren't that picky. They really aren't. If it smells good, they're gonna find it and they're gonna eat it. So you obviously wanna put some chum in there and you can see the traps have little kind of entrance ways. This one has one on this side, this side, there's one on each side of the trap. The trap sits on the bottom in the grass. The pinfish work their way in to eat the morsels and they can't get out. And it's again, relatively that simple. And you put a little rope on here with a buoy, which allows you to then find your trap and retrieve it. Um, there has been an issue with people losing their traps to, you know, people stealing them, believe it or not, that happens too. So some guys won't even put a buoy on their trap. Okay, they just, they know where it is. It's in a couple of feet of water, three, four feet of water. They could find it, they can retrieve it, and real simple. Other guys will take a trap, they'll put a buoy on it, but they'll have a series of traps and they'll all be tied together with essentially like a trap line. So they find the buoy, they pick up one trap, and then there might be four or five traps in a row that do not have buoys, really kind of inconspicuous. Um, a lot of different ways to do it, but again, the trap, in my opinion, perhaps is the easiest and most effective way to catch them, especially because you can bait it, you can leave the trap out there, you can retrieve it the next day, um, and usually it's loaded with pinfish. Um, what I like to do is put the chum in it because there's a lot of scent and it really attracts those pinfish, but that chum dissipates with the current, right? Relatively fast. So I also put a carcass in there and that tends to stay substantially longer. So my trap is fishing for a substantially longer period of time. Okay. Oftentimes you may get a couple dozen pinfish in a few hours. Sometimes you need a couple days to load up on it. You know, again, a lot of different variables. Um, one way to find them too, you can get on a grass bed. If you're not sure if there are pinfish there, you know, throw some chum, take a rod, you know, just a light rod with a paddle tail jig, throw it out there and work it. If there's pinfish around, you'll see them chasing it or it'll bite the tail off the jig. Um, or just try and bait them up with the sabiki rod, rod and reel. And then if you can locate, you know, a, a consistent supply of them in a particular area, then of course that's a great area to set the trap, right? Pretty common sense. Moving water, you know, is always going to be beneficial, an area that has some current flow because that's going to dissipate the scent and the scent will of course attract the pinfish from a greater distance. Um, pretty, you know, kind of a uh, cut and dry, pretty basic stuff, but it's important to remember all of these factors. Now, you know, interestingly, some traps, again, this one has four openings. You know, I use some much larger traps. Like here's just an example to show you. This is a big cube, right? Giant pinfish trap, big door on the top where I put my chum block in. But interestingly, this has one opening on this side and one opening on this side, no openings on the other sides. And, you know, I've heard all sorts of rumors. There's guys who believe that if the entrance ways are pointing east and west, you're not going to catch as many pinfish as if they're pointed north and south. And that's here in the Keys with that current moving in and out, north and south. I don't know, you know, I think if you're on a healthy grass bed and there's a lot of pinfish there, I don't care what side the doors are on, you're gonna catch pinfish, okay? I've been, you know, in the Gulf where you put a chum bag in the water, maybe you're chumming for sharks in the shallows, you put a chum bag in the water and within 15 minutes, there's 500 pinfish eating right off your chum bag and you could just scoop them up with a net, you know, sometimes they're so thick. So it's not really that challenging, like I said, of a bait fish to find and catch, but you have to put in the time, you have to put in the effort, okay, and you have to get zeroed in on them. Once you catch them, they're easy to keep alive on the boat, and they're easy to keep alive off the boat at your dock or wherever, of course, you're going to keep them. Now let's talk about fishing pinfish, right, because obviously the idea with catching them is to be able to go out and fish them. And there's a lot of different ways to do that. If you're an inshore angler, you know, we talked about cutting that pinfish diagonally, fishing it under a popping cork, 
or of course fishing it live, okay? Well, if you're gonna fish it live for snook, for redfish, and certainly for snook, big snook love big pinfish, lively pinfish. Where do you hook that pinfish? Well, let's talk a little bit about that. There's our buddy right there. There's a star of the show, Mr. Pinfish, right there. It's an average size pinfish. Some of course are substantially larger, some are even smaller. This guy's a little bit beat up. He's been in my pen. He's seen better days, but he's still kicking, he's still doing good, and a fish is gonna eat him. Now, if there's a situation where there's no current at all, okay, which isn't ideal, obviously, you can hook that pinfish right in the back area there, just, you know, close enough to the top where the hook will rip out, okay, and you can pierce the hook right in that area there. However, and also understand, if you're looking to cast that pinfish, it's really kind of aerodynamic. If it's hooked back here, you can whiz it a really long way. If you hook it in the front or in the middle and try and cast it, it may wobble and you won't get the same distance. So you have to think about what you want to do with that pinfish and how you want it to react. Do you want the pinfish to swim toward the bottom? If you do, then you should hook it up toward the mouth area. Two ways to do that either through the lips from the bottom up, just like that, right? That's the way I prefer to hook them, and I'm sure you can see that, right through the bottom lip, up through the top, or through the nostrils. That's another way of hooking that, whoops, see that? <laughs> That's another way of hooking that pinfish, is through the nostrils. So two different ways, but again, the circle hook, fully exposed, I find that to be the ideal scenario right there. That's a BMC number 738570. And that's the way that I fish that pinfish for snappers and groupers, mangrove snappers, I'm sorry, mutton snappers. Uh, for mangrove snappers, I'm gonna fish a slightly smaller pinfish and I'm gonna fish a slightly smaller hook, okay? But the same concept, same concept. Um, keep in mind, you know, like I said, everything eats it. So the cool thing about it is when you throw a pinfish out there, you just don't know what you're going to catch. You know, just recently, as a matter of fact, I was out on a little bit of a solo trip. I caught four fish in a row. Each one was different. I was fishing a wreck. I caught a mutton snapper. I caught a yellow jack. I caught a cobia. Okay. And I caught an African pompano. And every single one of those four fish was on the same bait. The pinfish being rigged the same way. I fish it on that 7-0 hook a long leader, eight to 16 ounces, depending on the depth, the current, okay, and what I'm, the situation that I'm facing on that particular day. But of course, I wanna keep that bait on or near the bottom in the strike zone, but everything eats them. I've caught, like I said earlier, even blackfin tuna on pinfish right off the bottom. So I cannot stress what an absolutely awesome bait that really is how easy it is to catch, how easy it is to keep. And you know, if you're, if you're an offshore guy up along the southeast coast of Florida, you may not think a lot about pinfish because your life revolves around pilchards and goggle eyes, you know, and speedos and tinker mackerel and sardines and threadfin herring. And the last thing on your mind is a pinfish. Um, and rightfully so. However, if you're over on the West Coast and you're a snook fisherman, red fisherman, or if you're up in the Indian River, you know, lagoon area, Mosquito Lagoon, Biscayne Bay, the Everglades National Park, I mean, I can go on here. You know as well as I do that pinfish are priceless. They really, really are. So if you're not already using them, make sure that you do, okay? Add them into your arsenal, and I think you're really gonna be surprised at how effective this bait fish can be. Remember, if you wanna catch up on previous uh, topics that we've discussed, if you're just joining us and you missed some of tonight's gig, check us out right in our feed there. Uh, I also wanna mention real quick that, again, it's late June. And right around the corner, I'm thrilled to announce that July 2nd is the season premiere of season 11 of Florida Sport Fishing TV. Uh, this is absolutely our best season yet. We've revamped the entire show, new graphics, new music, high energy. I'm super stoked about it. A lot of education. We're in a new venue down here in Marathon. We've got a lot of new stuff going on, and I know you're going to love it as much as we did. So make sure you check it out on Bally. Bally Sports Sun used to be Fox Sports Sun. Uh, same channel, same network, 402. 
Same programming, just a new name. Of course, you'll also be able to catch all of the episodes on our YouTube channel. And we also have another big announcement on a new platform that we're going to be launching in early July. And I'm going to talk to you all about that next Thursday. So thanks for joining us. I hope you have an absolutely wonderful night. Get out there on the water. Make sure you rig and fish some pinfish. And I'll tell you what, I'm looking forward to hearing about all your great catches. Thanks again.